Hi everyone and welcome to my uh, review of the BVGP uh, DN3 There we go um, I, I want to actually apologize because I've had these earphones for over a month if not more and um, I just uh, I just carried on progressing you know continuously delaying the review and and uh, well, uh, I, I said myself now it's 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 no point in uh, putting this uh, putting this off anymore let's just do it once and for all and uh, here we go so this is the box uh, simple box with some some uh, of the specs behind uh, 19 ohm impedance I'm trying to focus this 19 ohm impedance 10 to 40 kilohertz uh, 10 hertz to 40 kilohertz frequency response 109 dbs which uh, will uh, obviously mean that it's pretty easy to drive but uh, I don't uh, well I don't think it's the best I think it actually shines it, it shows off its its capabilities better with the with a with a dongle or something like that so instead of just connecting it up to a to a phone and it uses a beryllium driver for for the dynamic driver and a, um, a HV, uh, HEVK BA for the high frequency so it's it's in a, it's in effect a hybrid a one plus one hybrid as is all of these uh, other IEMs which are here shows you form 1.1 3 uh, audio legacy l2 and the high MS2 these are the uh, these are our today's topic the uh, the n3s and that's it's actually that's it's bigger brother let's put it that way the dh5 uh, box like I said simple affair um, comes with, with the standard stuff that you would expect this box brought the well it's still got the cable inside here yeah? Uh, MMM6 connector, it's uh, a decent quality cable, a little bit rubbery and prone to candle, to tangling, but I mean, nothing uh, nothing that's going to be that annoying or anything of the sort. It brings a little bag as a carry case, let's put it that way, so a carry bag. Good selection of tips, some uh, what they call vocal ear tips, which are white bores, and then some... Um, uh, base ear tips which are uh, narrow bore and then some foams as well and um, this selection of tips uh, there's a reason for it and then I'll get into it just now as for the earphones themselves um, they've got a kind of a familiar look shape to them um, different face plates on, on, on either one so uh, completely different uh, this is done intentionally um, it's got, let me see if I can show you the vents here, so one vent is, I actually zoom this in a little bit first, there we go, so one vent is over there, one vent is over there, okay, and the other one is actually over there, you can actually sit there in the grill there slightly, the little hole there, same thing goes for the other side. So in the back, it'll kind of, you'll see it just barely, let me try and zoom it in here a little bit more. There we go. And then the other vent is over there. There we go. Okay. So it's an all alloy uh, of, of sorts uh, fair, uh, good quality. Um, um, the MMM6, uh, the MMCX connector is pretty secure. Uh, good fit. This isolation is uh, pretty decent. I mean, nothing, nothing spectacular. Will be very much tip dependent. Uh, I'm using, like I said, the um, bigger size uh, uh, base ear tips. Uh, so they have like a shorter, well, a narrower bore. Let me actually just compare them here to the the white bore, so you can actually see. There we go. That's a good comparison there. Okay. And um, well, as as some of you might know, but if you don't know, I'll explain. The reason behind the wider bore is to bring out the higher frequencies, so to maybe uh, let a, a darker sounding IEM kind of shine a little bit more and the, the narrow bore the reason behind that is to potentiate 
the bass frequencies slightly. The foam tips, which it also brings, they have a tendency of uh, again potentiating the um, lower frequencies while attenuating some harshness that you might find in the higher frequencies. Uh, which then brings us to uh, well, the IEM and what it's all about. Um, it's got, let me actually just show you a graph here quickly. The, the graph of the BGVP, uh, I wouldn't consider it, uh, let's put it this way, I wouldn't consider it um, appealing when you first look at it. It's, okay, there we go. It's the brown line. So it's a relatively flat uh, in the lower frequencies, mid bass focus, as you can see. And uh, let me just tighten it up. There we, go. there we go. So mid bass focused. Um, not any real bleeding into the mids that, uh, you know, although you do notice that sometimes uh, the bass. Uh, does have a tendency to kind of um, uh, mix, uh, uh, although there's good texture, at the same time uh, it's some, the, it seems like the driver is not quick enough or doesn't have a quick enough decay to resolve the different uh, beats, so it kind of mixes them up a little bit, but nothing, nothing terrible really. And then we have these peaks at around 2.5 and then another one at around 5k and then yet another one at 8. The 8 will probably be uh, more of a couple related peak than anything else. But that roller coaster there of peaks and especially at the frequencies that they are situated kind of makes for um, uh, an overly bright, let's put it that way, an overly bright um, uh, sound. Uh, and with, with or without the, the proper tip selection then uh, I'll just put this down. Without the proper tip selection, you will then uh, notice that uh, there is going to be some sibilance. There is going to be some fatigue. And uh, after trying out the tips, the wide bores, the narrow bores, and, and the foams, I ended up, uh, you know, staying with the, the narrow bore uh, because that one was the one that actually, in my opinion, uh, was capable of giving the best compromise. Um, as I was saying, uh, being a brilliant driver, and hopefully this one is a real brilliant driver because BGVP has had an instance in the past where the driver was supposedly a, a brilliant driver, and in fact, when when it was discovered that it was not a brilliant driver, it was a, a quite of a blow to the image and to the reputation of BGVP. So, hopefully, this is in fact a brilliant driver, and as I was saying, being a brilliant driver, um, it it gives the base a nice quickness, a nice impact, although for some reason, like I said earlier, uh, there's a tendency to, to sometimes just mix those mid-bass notes slightly and, and that just muddies up things a little bit. Uh, sub-bass, although not there's no tons of it, uh, there, there is enough sub-bass, so it's it's not a bass head IEM, but it has more than enough capabilities to satisfy that. Um, vocals, they are fine apart from the fact that when you start pushing it, uh, the, you know, you start giving it some, some, uh, some volume, you tend to feel that things become a little bit fatiguing because it's just overly bright. It's just, you know, especially on the female uh, vocals. And then the high frequencies as well, they, they suffer from that same fatigue. Um, in terms of detailed retrieval, soundstage and imaging, Detailed retrieval is acceptable. I mean, it, it could be better, especially when we're considering that this is a $75 IEM and there are things which are much cheaper, which have serious detailed retrieval capabilities. So detailed retrieval, it's, it's, it's fine. There are some songs that actually you are surprised with how good it actually can be. Uh, New Light from Kazuki, for example, you can actually you know figure out a few things there. But um, then there are others where you kind of left a little bit with, uh, with a sour taste in your mouth. So, um, overall, I'll, I'll say it's acceptable. Uh, soundstage, it's, it's uh, again, uh, it could have been better. That's just what I'm going to say. It could have been better. So, if I was to rate it from a 1 to 5, I'll give both of these a, a 3. Um, what, what, what would be um, 
its its preferred genres and so on. Um, look, uh, it's a difficult question to answer. Um, you would say that perhaps rock um, could be a possibility, but because of this somewhat harsh higher you know higher high, you know the high mids and and, and early treble because of this harshness that exists there or this excessiveness i wouldn't really call it harshness this excess uh, it can sometimes uh, it would make listening to some rock a little bit uh, a little bit um, painful is not the right word but i think you can understand what i'm saying a little bit fatiguing let's put it that way to to use a, a nicer terminology um, but overall, look, it, it, it's it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a nice idea, um, and me being me and, and always trying to find ways of improving things, I I had to give it my own personal touch, um, and that's exactly what I did. And after playing around with a few things, I'm taking out the filter, the nozzle filter. Um, actually, let me just show you here. Taking out the nozzle filter, um, let me just zoom it in. The standard one. Uh, I, if some of you might recognize, I put in a tangent filter, okay, uh, and as well, I put some foam inside of the actual um, of the actual nozzle. The BA uh, sits in um, in the nozzle right up front. Uh, and so the little bit of foam that I put in there was basically to make up the, the, the space that's available after we take out the BA from the equation. Uh, so for those that are not familiar, the tantrum filters are filters which come with the Tanya, the Oxygen, the HANA. And these filters are basically this. It's a cloth filter that comes uh, together with the IEMs and it's to substitute the standard ones once they get full of dirt or something uh, and they have a tendency uh, well they have a tendency no they are designed in such a way that let me just show you the graph again they uh, affect okay here we go they affect let me get a, some kind of a point here or something okay so they have a tendency of affecting the area which is, let me just zoom this in, there we go, okay, much better. So they have a tendency of affecting basically the area between one and a half and 5k. They affect this area by dropping it down. And as can be seen by the blue line there, which I've called the Acros Retune, uh, that's what basically it's done. It's brought down that excessive energy, matched it, matched it much in a much nicer, much pleasurable way with the rest of the frequency range. And everything now sits within uh, roughly six to eight dBs between the lowest and, and then the highest, uh, which makes for a, a very, very nice neutral signature. Bass, as you can see, mid bass has not been affected. It's just that peak there, 2.5, that's been brought down. The peak again at 5 has been brought down. And the peak of the actual resonance from the coupler has also been slightly brought down. So everything is much more smoother, much more flat, much more neutral. And honestly, this neutrality changes the, the DN3 completely. Um, I would say that uh, for those that like to tinker around and like to play around, and if you do want to get the DN3, this is a must-do mod. That's my opinion. The same way as we tip roll uh, to find the tips which Bit, uh, or best bring out the characteristics of IEMs and to a certain extent we also change cables to improve the IEMs and their capability. Uh, doing a tantrum nozzle filter change is a must. It's a must not only for the, the, the DN3 but for many other IEMs which benefit tremendously from it. And with the filter, like I was saying, this becomes a totally different beast. It is a pleasure to listen to it for a long time. And even the rating of it compared to the IEMs which I have here um, changes completely. So just a quick run through. Shosy Form 1.1, um, an IEM which can be now bought at actually even less than the, the N3. This can be now bought at around $60, $65 at some stores on AliExpress. 
fantastic construction this is again a one plus one 9.2 millimeter beryllium driver ba known for its base the mids are a little bit recessed they try to make up for that by giving the high frequencies a boost but that boost comes at a cost which is sibilance thus the reason for the foam tips to kind of counteract that sibilance but that aside um you know by using the foam tips you control that sibilance the moment that is resolved and it's out of the way, this shows you 1.1 or uh, tremendous IEMs. Honestly, um, I, I, I thoroughly enjoy them. And one of my favorite one plus ones, definitely. Um, the Audio uh, Legacy L2, uh, relatively neutral, very nice bass and brilliant driver as well. Um, nice sub bass in terms uh, of quantity superior to the DM3. Um, actually, sorry, the, the base on, on the shows is superior to the DM3, both in terms of quantity, quality, everything. The base, as I was saying, of the L2s is superior to the DM3s in the sense that it has got more sub bass quantity and quality of the sub bass as well. Uh, whereas this is more bit miss, more bit mid bass focused, this has more sub bass. Uh, mids are very neutral. Um, compared to the standard one, it just eats the DM3 alive. As the DM3 now stands, it's it's uh, neck and neck. It's it's almost identical. And then the highs on the L2s are recessed slightly, but they all match up nicely with with the, the L2s. Uh, again, in standard format, this is a much nicer IEM than this. Uh, more neutral, more balanced, more coherent. No sibilance, no nothing. As it stands now, modded, it's about the same. Um, and then the high des MS2s, which when I review them, I consider them to be probably the, the go to one plus one hybrid at around $80. Um, the thing that really shines in these is the detail uh, retrieval, the detail retrieval, the capacity to the imaging. Um, it, it's just, it's just second to none. The implementation of the 33518 in this uh, IM has been perfect. The marriage with the dynamic driver has been perfect. I mean, when you're talking hybrids, uh, that matching of drivers has to be obviously paid attention to. You can't just stick drivers together and hope it works. I mean, that's a little bit of what happens in the GQ10. As individual drivers uh, playing their individual frequencies, uh, you know, the piezos, for example, on the GQ10 are amazing. I mean, the treble is, wow. Uh, the mids, again, amazing, wow. Uh, the bass, well, assuming that, it, that you got a good unit, the bass it can be a little bit muddy and slow, but it's it's okay, it's fine. It's the marriage of those drivers that was not, in my opinion, properly uh, accomplished, and it makes for uh, a subpar, um, a subpar uh, uh, presentation which could have been amazing and in that aspect the the engineers here at high this they did their homework i mean they match the drivers on the high this to perfection uh, and like i said uh, bass is amazing quick textured impactful it's it's got everything that you want uh actually it, it's there's more bass than what you would think there is when you look at the graph um, mids perfect, vocals perfect, um, highs no words there. If there is any defect that I want to point out is that maybe sometimes that excessive quickness of the bass can hamper the tonality slightly. Uh, and in that aspect, the the one that here wins in terms of tonality is definitely the L2. Out of all of these, modded or non-modded DM3. Uh, the tonality of the L2s is the most correct out of all of these September because it's the best. Um, with the Hydras coming in second place, well, uh, next with the, sh well, second place and then the shows the third. The tonality here on on the DN3, it, it's just wrong because of the excessive energy that he has in standard form. Once it's modified, the tonality benefits uh, tremendously and it becomes much more correct. Uh, so, in standard format, as standard IEMs, how would I rate these? I would rate MS2 first place, without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, L2's second place, a close third with the Shosi, uh, but just right behind the L2's, and then the DM3's in, in fourth place, in standard format. Uh, in modified format, 
the, the MS2s maintain their position. They are absolutely a fantastic IM. Uh, and then these three kind of, I would say, share almost the same position because the difference between the Shozi and the L2 is it's it's very minimal. I mean, when I say this is second, this is third, um, I'm, I'm really nitpicking here yeah, because they, they both are very, very good. Uh, the excess energy here, um, which has been tamed down, is actually beneficial in some songs. Over here, the, 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 the nice mids that it has compensates for, for certain, uh, for certain uh, flatness on, on the Shozi. And the modified DN3, it kind of uh, brings these two together. It kind of has uh, the nice mids that the, the L2s have with a nice controlled treble. Um, like the showsy, I mean, it is really. I would almost say, uh, I will almost almost give it a second place. Let's put it that way. Uh, this is a second place in modified form. So, first, second, third, and fourth modified, as standard. First, second, third, and fourth. So to go from a, let's say a, a fourth place in standard format to go to a second place with a simple mod, which is not difficult to execute. I think it's 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 uh, it's worth it. It's re re very. I mean, it's really worth the, the spending the time to do it. It's a five minute thing you do, uh, and you don't need any special tools or, or knowledge to do it. It's it's really simple. Uh, and yeah, that's basically it. I mean, as a wrap up, I just um, wanted to thank um, uh, Hi-Fi Go for uh, for having. Uh, gotten me these IMs, I paid for them <laughs> when I say gotten them, I wasn't, they weren't sent to me for free um, to have sold me these IMs and uh, um, hopefully hopefully um, BGVP uh, might uh, reconsider a slight retune, I mean uh, in standard format I guess there will be people that will like the signature and will enjoy the way it plays but I think it's just much more pleasant the way it is now tuned um, as for the Brigger Brother, which I reviewed also recently, I really hope that they do something about this because the potential is there. Uh, it's just the way that everything is put together it was so so disappointing that really I, I was I was expecting more, and I think that BGVP really needs a a win. They really need to come up with a with an IEM, which can really bring some attention to them again. And I think that the DN3 has the 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 genes to be that I am. They just need to perhaps consider either a DN3 Pro or something, or a DN3 Evo uh, with a slight retune. Uh, and uh, yeah, and we have a winner in our hands. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this little take and uh, speak to you soon. Take care. Bye bye.